Thank you very much for joining us for the main news on Kamnet TV. My name is Marco Kwa Koze. Sincere apologies for bringing the news slightly, right? This is due to circumstances beyond our control. Let's take a look at the stories that are making the headlines in this evening's news. A minibus drivers in Lusaka clash with pirate taxi drivers. A real estate company accused of swindling a 65-year-old woman of Lusaka. Opposition MPs aged to desist from deliberately breaking the law. In international news, Kenya says it won't send police mission to Haiti until UN funds it. And in sports news, Red Arrows hammers green buffaloes by four goals to one. For details of these and other stories, join us shortly after this break. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-049-213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point of sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren Bay, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren B is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. And now the news in detail. The Zambia Federation of Disabilities, ZAFOD, has demanded for a quick ratification of the African Disability Protocol, ADP. Speaking during a press briefing Saturday, ZAFOD Vice President Paul Mbewe says the organization recognizes the role of the current legal framework in protecting persons with disabilities anchored on the United Nations Convention on Persons with Disabilities Protocol but does not reflect the African context. Mr. Mbewe says the current legal framework does not take into account specific issues affecting persons with disabilities, especially persons living with albinism. And Zafford Executive Director Justin Bakali says the organization believes that the Zambian government will be among the first 15 countries in Africa for to in Africa for the protocol to come into effect. We have details in the following report. The Zambia Federation of Disability Organizations, Zafford, has appealed to government to sign the ratification of the African Disability Protocol, ADP, in Zambia. According to the disability movement, the ADP is unique to Africa and takes the continent's practices and concerns into consideration in the address of disability issues. Speaking during a press conference Saturday morning, Zafford Vice President Pombewe said the current legal framework on persons with disabilities in Zambia falls short. As for African humanist philosophy of kinship or Ubuntu could be used to the benefit of persons with disabilities in Africa. These and many other reasons not covered in this press statement gave birth to the African Disability Protocol, ADP. It became imperative to the African leadership that an African Disability Protocol was needed, one that would borrow the principles of the UN CRPD, but speak more progressively to our unique challenges as, as citizens with disabilities living in Africa. Mr. Mbewe says the disability movement therefore demands that government ratifies the ADP to further enhance safeguard of persons with disabilities in the country. Then the, our demand to government now is that they should let the process of ratifying the protocol be expedited so that we begin to see a holistic and decisive approach to disability inclusion in public life and national development. We believe that those in government who are charged with this noble responsibility have had enough time to study the document. 
Meanwhile, Zafford Executive Director Justin Bakari has stressed that the ratification of the protocol will cement Zambia's democratic credentials. The situation is that we wouldn't want actually to see because Zambia has been known to be a champion of democracy and our expectation, we want Zambia to be one of the 15 first countries to ratify this uh, African Disability Protocol. Currently, only 10 African countries have ratified the ADP and five countries remain before it automatically comes into effect on the continent. For Kamini TV News, Afia Skaptula, Lusaka. The Edgar Lungu Patriotic Front PF-led faction has held the Catholic bishops for their wisdom and dedication to upholding the principles of justice and fairness in the country. Faction Vice President Given Lubinda says the party extends its heartfelt gratitude to the bishops' tireless efforts in standing up for the democracy and amplifying the voices of those who may otherwise go unheard. In a statement Saturday, Mr. Luinda says the courage and moral authority of the bishops in advocating for the rights of the voiceless is commendable. He adds that the leadership in promoting social justice aligns with the values that contribute to a stronger and more equitable Zambia. On Friday, the Catholic bishops, through ZCCB Vice President Charles Kasonde, released the Catholic bishops' pastoral letter highlighting a number of social, political and economic issues in the country. Goodwill Ambassador for Persons with Disabilities Elijah Ngwale has attributed the return of former President Edgar Lungu to active politics to the ill belief that no Tonga president can rule the country. In an interview with Kamnet News, Mr. Ngwale says former President Lungu needs to come to terms with reality and accept the fact that President Hitilema, who he thought would never be president, is now the leader of the country. Meanwhile, Chikondi Foundation President John Mambo has, la has labeled the return of former President Edgar Lungu to active politics as a wrong move. Here's a report. Former President Edgar Lungu's return to active politics has continued to receive mixed reactions. Mr. Lungu announced his comeback on October 28, 2023, putting to rest intensified speculation on his possible comeback. Commenting on the former head of state return to politics, outspoken Chikondi Foundation President Johnny Mambo has labeled the comeback of the former head of state as a wrong move. President Lungu. If I was, the, I was the one advising me, former president, I would have said don't come back in politics. They are cheating him. I am not a, 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 a prophet. It's very difficult for you to leave power and come back. Speaking in an interview with Cabinet News, Bishop Mambo said history has shown that such decisions breed division in the country. What put Gaunda into, into, into problems? We are still upset as Zambian. He was taken to Mkoweko during Christmas. Mandela became upset. Uh, Julius Nyerere flew here and went to visit him. It's something that Zambians felt very bad over President Jerome. Now, I know people are beating drums. No, he must come back and talk. They are cheating. Someone among them wants to use him to get into power. He will lose the election and then they'll come and say, it is me next and so forth. Meanwhile, persons with disabilities, Goodwill Ambassador Elijah Jangwale has attributed the return of the former head of state to politics to selfish beliefs by some individuals in the former ruling party, the Patriotic Front. Up to this time, to find him, so there is no need. There is no need because even, even, even what I'm saying is that the, 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 the records which are there, why should he come back? It means that he, the whole PF, the whole PF, the only person who, who, who matters is, 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 is Lungu. No. Mr. Lungu is currently employed in PF Rangos as he has found himself leading a faction that was led by acting part president Given Lubinda. For Kamlet TV News, Afia Skaptula, Lusaka.
Chiwombo District Commissioner has held the Developmental Aid from People to People, DAP, for making strides in transforming the livelihoods of vulnerable children, especially street kids in the country. Speaking during the Children's Town School Grade 9 Pupils and Youth Academy Vocation Skills Students Graduation on Friday, Mr. Kayeka says schools development is critical to job creation and promoting sustainable livelihoods among young people. The commissioner has since aged the 56 graduates, among them 18 former street kids, to apply the skills they have acquired. And DAP Managing Director Elise Sorensen expressed commitment to support street children with survival skills and reintegration into society. have gone through a life-changing period which has allowed them to uh, acquire skills not only in their field uh, of trade but also skills on how to have a different view points to issues affecting the young people today. I have no doubt that the skills they have acquired are a game changer and will open more doors into their open future. The skills you have acquired from this school and nothing but a skill for you to go out there and make a living. Use the skills wisely and be a motivation to others who have learned away from school in search of the easier life. I proudly stand here to mention that our school is among the few schools in the district which are being given the status or a privilege of uh, uh, a privilege to, to practice examinations under Tibeta. We appreciate this privilege and highly embrace it. The school has produced a 100% pass rate throughout from the time it's, it was granted the status. So, to you graduates, once again, congratulations. Especially to those of you who have a past life on the streets. It has not been an easy journey, we know that. We have a sign there on the street saying, you close the door to one part of your life, you open another door to your future. That's what you have done once. You did it two years ago or three years ago for some of you when you left the streets and came here and remained here and did all the hard work to win this graduation. So congratulations again and now you are going to open, as the sign is saying, you're going to open another door to your life, to another future. Some minibus drivers in Lusaka have accused the local council and the road transport and safety agency RATSA of failing to regulate and ensure smooth and safe operation of the taxi sub-sector in Zambia. The demonstrating minibus drivers operating at Kamwala Station on the Kafue Lusaka route have claimed that in their protest that most of the escalated pirate drivers are operating illegally and that in most cases they don't even pay tax as the bus drivers do. The bus drivers believe that pirate taxis are illegal because they are privately owned vehicles whose operations are not registered as public vehicles and still possess black number plates. Here's a report. Yes. Wrangles between minibus drivers and pirate taxi drivers in Lusaka have continued after pirated taxi drivers counter-reacted to fellow colleagues 
resulting in continued outcries of infringement of operations. Many bus drivers have protested against their fellow drivers who are involved in the transport business without legal registration of their vehicles, accusing them of disturbing their business as they are not registered transport operators. the demonstrating minibus drivers have claimed in their protest that most of the escalating pirates taxis are operating illegally and allege that in most cases are not even paying tax as they do. The drivers operating at Lusaka downtown Kamala station believe that pirate taxis are illegal because they are private vehicles which apparently are not registered as public vehicles as they still have black number plates. <laughs> Let <laughs> And some of the commuters also added a word on the issue. Enforcers are supposed to take this matter seriously because they're private people. They make an accident and they neglect, they run away. Where can you trace it? And they are pilots. In response to all the allegations said against them, some pirates, taxi drivers, who sought a nominee, said there was room for both parties to come up with a mechanism that will benefit them. So that's why ni tena pata kama namba pre but not wale wangu kama it's illegal wa 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 shita illegal ma ma nani au ba no wanani it's not it's not confirmed by the the last no it's confirmed by the last if you want the madam you 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 confirm kuli ba last and ask them do you know the issues of identity for downtown they will tell you the issues of identity and we put by identity so in terms of the illegal what they are saying that no it is illegal it is wrong we just need to cooperate in our job to be running from us. You know what is the way for good? All of us, we are just we are drivers. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. The National Union of Public and Private Educators of Zambia, NUPES, says it will next week Monday start the bargaining process with the Zambian government for better wages of the teachers. Nopez General Secretary Nelson Mwale says the union has however distanced itself from a statement issued by its member in the eastern province stating that the teachers get that what the teachers get is enough and that they should be prudent in how they utilize their resources. Mr. Mwale says the statement does not represent the union but the personal opinion of the person of the person that released it. As National Union of Public and uh, Private Educators of Zambia, uh, NUPES, 
we want to inform our members countrywide that uh, we are, as public sector unions, going into negotiations with the uh, government uh, starting on uh, the 13th uh, of November. Uh, that is uh, the Monday that is coming after tomorrow. And so we are grateful enough that uh, whatever we are, you know, submit to government are issues that uh, we are actually gotten from our members countrywide through consultation. Having said that, I also want to take this opportunity to distance the Secretariat of the National Union of Public and Private Educators of Zambia, NUPES, from a statement circulating on social media coming from Mubriz FM in Eastern Province that an official in Eastern Province has issued a statement uh, uh, saying that um, what teachers are getting is uh, enough or they need to stop with gambling and other activities uh, where they are wasting their money. I think as a union we want to strongly distance ourselves from the statement coming from this official because as I'm speaking now this official will undergo disciplinary measures because the statement that he issued had no blessings from secretariat and so we are saying can teachers take what I'm speaking now as official contrary to what is circulating on social media and what is coming from Breeze FM because that statement had no blessings, I think, from Secretary and it's, it's, it's his own personal uh, opinion, which does not come from, you know, uh, Secretary at headquarters here in Osaka. The Agriculture, Technical and Professional Staff Union of Zambia says government should put more resources for the irrigation system in the country in order to increase production. In an interview with Cabinet News, Union General Secretary Geston Ponde says climate change is now affecting the rain pattern and that there is need for irrigation facilities to be installed in all parts of the country. And Mr. Ponde says government needs to pay so much attention to extension officers in order for farmers to get the much needed extension services in a bid to improve production. Government should uh, put more resources uh, in terms of uh, uh, coming up with the irrigation facilities throughout the country because uh, uh, the rains uh, nowadays uh, it's, it's, it's not certain we can't uh, rely much on uh, the rains because uh, of the issues of uh, climate change. So we need to do a lot in terms of uh, uh, putting up uh, irrigation uh, facilities uh, across the country, which uh, will really help us to increase uh, uh, production. And uh, the other concern also is on the uh, recruitment of uh, camp extension officers. I think government has not done much. We, we, we are very much concerned because uh, the numbers given each year, you'd find that uh, they are very low as compared to these other uh, sectors, which are uh, just consuming sectors. Outside an example of education, means of health, these are consuming sectors where we, we can, yes, uh, pay attention, but much more attention should be given to uh, these productive sectors. The United Party for National Development, UPND Luena, member of parliament, Anakoka Muwita, has urged opposition political parties to desist from deliberately breaking the law as they will continue painting themselves in bad light. In an exclusive interview, Mr. Anakoka says the ruling UPND will not allow any individual to break the law with impunity and go unpunished. The lawmaker says opposition leaders fond of misleading the nation with blank statements should avoid doing so as this will not in any way assist in, develop in the development of the country. False statements rumors 
in any form which has the effect of alarming or the potential to alarm the nation as being a misdemeanor. And anybody who does so is guilty of a felony and uh, can face up to three years imprisonment. Now, I do understand why our friends seem to have problems with uh, the law being applied. That's because they managed a regime that had absolutely no regard for the law of the land. They were doing things at Kada whims, basically just applying the law as they saw fit, rather than according to the dictates of the constitution and the various pieces of legislation that govern us in Zambia. And I would like to appeal to them that they should desist from deliberately breaking the law because they are only painting themselves in very, very bad light before the population of this country. And uh, as the UPND government, we will never advocate for people to be allowed to break the law with impunity because On that note, we break for some commercials. We have more news coming up. Don't go away. Potatoes, the unsung heroes of flavor. From crispy chips to creamy mash, potatoes are the versatile superstars of your kitchen. Grown with love by our dedicated workforce drawn from around the community of Palavana. Savenda Farm's commitment is to see to it that we have potatoes that are grown right, healthy, big and tasty. For that quick fix or big celebration or that meal that brings family together, top chefs rely on the Savenda potato to create culinary masterpieces. And for others, it's that icebreaker to a delightful conversation. So, embrace the magic of Savenda potatoes. They're not just a side dish, they're the heart and soul of your kitchen. Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-049-213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point of sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren Bay, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren B is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Planning to marry or get married? Contact the Cabinet Media Team for a professional capturing of your big day in life. Let your relatives, friends, and the nation join you in celebrating your big day on television. Just at a manageable fee, Cabinet Television will cover and transmit your wedding on your channel of choice. 
contact the marketing department on mobile number. Cabinet Television, not just another channel. I give my love to home. And as far Welcome back. We continue with the news. A 65-year-old woman of Lusaka's Kanyama compound is demanding for 3,000 kwata she paid to a real estate company for a plot purchase. In an interview with Kamnet News, Maureen Kamboe says the real estate company identified as a star site properties located in Lusaka's Matero Township allegedly swindled her on pretext that they had a 20 by 10 plot for sale when in fact not. Ms. Kamboe laments that in 2020 the said company promised to refund her but nothing has been done yet. Here's a report. <laughs> After raising a little resources in order to buy land and build her own dream house, 65-year-old Maureen Kamboye has gone back to the drawing board as the dream seemed to have been cut short. Early 2022, the 65-year-old, among hundreds of individuals, rushed to secure land at Starside Properties, which the company advertised to be located in 10 miles. Like many, she secured a 20 by 10 portion of land and made a deposit of 3,000 kwacha. According to her, little did she know that the land in question belonged to someone else and not the real estate company that sold them. She says the real estate company, which is located in Lusaka's Matero Township, allegedly swindled her on pretext that they had a plot to sell, when in fact not. <laughs> She lamented that in 2022 the said company promised to refund her, but nothing has been done. She is now demanding for the said 3,000 kwacha. So we end up with a man and dear Wasaka Sagana, we have a very my inform yaw. Dear Pamela, I have very incapacity and dear Tapanja, dear Amenia, dear Batam and dear Amenia, and dear Moza, in the Stabiso, in the so 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 Zaka was I was our patch so so, a dear Pamela, dear Pamela Pajamana, Conca, when we are in the Pujalondo, Paga of Figa. We have been a good evening, they can't come in Muribe. Muriba would be more face on anyone, I believe they were one to be dead. Captain Gamo, the American Pamela, dear Moffes, my name, what ye. So na boya kani yanda ma mene ya ya i tuzaku pasani cha bet so muka pili chetu mo pa na ni June na ni June yoya pita June July August September kwenye ngoma na sense la rema chasa ma jidi ma mene pa ma jum September mene na boya na boya mmm mmm imo bantu imo ni tangu zeli kuni ma ba wiki jum kabe na mungaji zemo chiti la imo zaswa imo chiti ya kuli ba mene na chiti abantu nda ma na ya kuda ma jidi anamasi kuna mafuni onzo na juu. Meanwhile, Starside Properties Company admits of the woman having purchased the land from them and states that she is among those listed to be refunded. To, to, to talk to me, why can't she call and find out where we are situated? Because no, that's just bringing uh, someone's business down like that. The issue is very straightforward. She can just ask where our, office, our new offices are. I'm sure she's on the list, so she can go there and she'll be refunded. She, there's a certain date I'm sure that uh, she was put on. So let her go to the office, let her visit the offices on Monday to correct the new date so that she can get a refund. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Days Consulting and Training Chief Executive Officer Marcus Days 
says polarization has enabled the art industry in Zambia fail to tick, hence discouraging many talented young people to start practicing art. Speaking at the cultural art exhibition in Lusaka Saturday, Mr. Dace says there is need for various stakeholders including hotels and the Ministry of Tourism to collaborate and help promote the visual art sector in order for it to become sustainable. Meanwhile, Dr. Bernard Simakwezi, a professional medical doctor, says his profession has not stopped him from preserving cultural from preserving culture through art in the fast growing digital age. Here's a report. Days Consulting and Training is holding a two-day cultural heritage art exhibition in Lusaka in a bid to promote the art industry that has remained underdeveloped in a long time. Speaking at the exhibition site in Lusaka, Organization Chief Executive Officer Marcus Dai says art has not been promoted and appreciated in Zambia, resulting in most talented young people wasting their talent, hence the need for stakeholders such as hotels and those in the tourism sector to come on board and see how best art can be incorporated in their premises. Because what we see here in the creative and cultural industry is that there's a bit of nepotism that's happening and, and this although that we have about 8.8% of the Zambian working population that are in the creative and cultural industry. So it's really a, um, a very important industry for, for Zambia's GDP. So we hope for the future that um, Bortos will, once they've seen the, the advantages of having um, such events for youth, they will also um, you know, create such a space for other events. Dr. Bernard Simakweza is a professional medical doctor who has not allowed his career to stop him from utilizing his talent. People ap appreciate um, realistic art where, I mean, can you draw me and things like that. But when you want to share your story in form of a painting, people don't really appreciate. And I think the challenge we have is that our very own people have not yet discovered the value of our art. Other than that, we lack uh, uh, platforms where we can showcase our art as frequently as we can. Uh, we are luck, uh, lucky rather that uh, we've had uh, an opportunity to uh, exhibit our works at such a facility. Other artists such as Kinsley Kapobe and Boston Mulenga are using art as a mean of survival but says artists should also find time to pursue other careers adding that they can still be practicing while doing other things. If you see the Mona Lisa, those are the highest, uh, what's the price, artworks, I would say. Yeah, of which if you see the money in those artworks, it, it, uh, there are monies whereby they can even change your, your, your life. So I would tell them to get that as an inspiration. They can go somewhere. They can be the next guys doing the Mona Lisa painting. The thing I put forward before I teach is, can you complete education? Of a formal education and then to, to that you add art as well. You can earn a living, you are an artist, you are a teacher, you get money from teaching and from art. We have got such people. Zambia is full of talented young visual artists who are still hiding in the closet for fear that the art sector will not improve their lives, hence the need to grow the sector in order to allow for many young people find other sources of survival. Prudence Chota, reporting for Community TV News. The Center for Trade, Policy and Development says the decision taken by the Zambian government to increase the statutory reserve ratio by 3% should be complemented by enough fiscal policy in order to increase production. CTPD Public Finance Lead Researcher Elijah Mumba says the decision will not be effective in the long term as the, the, the monetary policy alone is not effective but should be complemented by other factors. Mr. Mumba says most key economic sectors are poorly performing as the need for them to increase their production and export their products. One of the things I think that is important to highlight, especially when you look at the 
economic fundamentals in our country is that they are structural in nature. So for example, what for us as a center, what we need really is uh, to be effective those measures, they should be complemented by enough uh, fiscal uh, policy as well, so that we can increase production because you need to look at also what are the major drivers, why is the quacha depreciating, uh, right? So we have, uh, for example, in the mining sector, we have poor performance in most of these key economic sectors. So if we can bolster, for example, performance in the mining sector, that means we could have more exports and by implication we have uh, more foreign uh, reserves. So I think that would also help. So I don't see how that would be effective, especially in the medium term. Maybe in the short run, we might see some transmission and uh, a little bit of moderation, but uh, monetary policy alone cannot be effective unless it's complemented by other you know, activities in the economy. But otherwise, uh, I think that was expected. So in terms of implication on the individuals, you know, already if you know about the, uh, the interest rates at commercial banks, they're already high, right? So it's already constraining a lot of uh, individuals and also businesses to go and get money from the commercial banks. But also what it means for commercial banks themselves is that the money that they can now remain with and loan out there will be that reduction as a result of the changes, you know, and all of those things are aimed at. The Drug Enforcement Commission, through its Anti-Money Laundering Investigations Unit, has arrested and charged Peter Moche, a credit supervisor at, uh, at an unknown company, for fraud and money laundering involving over 400,000 United States dollars. Drug Enforcement Commission Public Relations Officer Hussein Khan says the accused is alleged to have on debts unknown but between January the 1st, 2019 to 31st December 2019, while employed as a credit supervisor at an unknown company, made false entries in the books of accounts of the company and stole over 400,000 United States dollars. Mr. Khan says in the course of investigations, the commission seized eight flats in Lusaka's Delay area, a plot in New Kasama and a Toyota Corolla registration number BAD 6129. The Anti-Laundering Investigation Unit on the Copper Belt has arrested and charged a Zambian national for fraud and money laundering in alleged gold scam. Particulars of the matter are that Samuel Manda on debts unknown but between the 1st of September 2023 and the 31st of October 2023 jointly and while it's acting together with other unknown fraudulently obtained 65,000 United States dollars from Michael Bakete purporting that they would supply him with 20 kilograms of gold when in fact not. The Drug Enforcement Commission, through its Antimony Laundering Investigations Unit, has arrested and charged a credit supervisor for fraud and money laundering involving over 400,000 United States dollars. Particulars of this matter are that Peter Muche, a male aged 50, on dates unknown but between 1st January 2019 and 31st December 2019, while employed as a credit supervisor at a known company, made false entries in the books of accounts of the company and in the process stole 409,565 United States dollars. Moche further engaged in money laundering involving the said sum with a process of crime. In the course of investigations, the commission seized several properties from Moche, namely eight flats in Osaka's Lilai area, a plot in New Kasama, and the Toyota Corolla registration number BAD 6129. Moche has since been charged with fraudulent false accounting, contrary to Section 326 of the Penal Code, Chapter 87 of the Laws of Zambia, theft by public servant, contrary to Section 278 of the Penal Code, money laundering, contrary to Section 7 of the Prohibition and Prevention of Money Laundering Act No. 14 of 2001, as amended, and possession of property suspected of being proxies of crime, contrary to Section 71 of the Forfeiture of Proceeds of Crime Act No. 19 of 2010. 
We take another set of commercials. Still ahead in the news, we have sports and international. Don't go away. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-049-213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point-of-sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren Bay, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren Bay is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Get all the latest updates in court news only on Kamne TV. We take you and make you feel part of the court sessions through our in-depth coverage of the adjudication process. Get informed on those have been arrested, delayed and denied the police bond or bail victims, persons taking plea, court adjournments, verdicts and those administration issues in the judiciary. Come Next TV is on channel 274 on DSTV, channel 25 on Go TV, and find us on channel 106 on Topstar. You can also follow and give us a like on our social media platforms. Come Next TV, not just another channel. Welcome back and now in international news, Kenya's government has said it won't deploy its police officers to Haiti until all conditions on training and funding are met. Last month, the United Nations Secu Security Council gave its approval for Kenya to command the a multinational mission to combat violent gangs in the troubled Caribbean country. Interior Minister Kaitore Ka Kindiki told Parliament's Department Committee on Administration and Internal Security that unless all resources are mobilized and availed, the troops will not leave the country. Kenya's government says its police officers won't be deployed to Haiti until all conditions on training and funding are met. They were set when the UN Security Council gave its approval last month for Kenya to command a multinational mission to the troubled Caribbean country to combat violent gangs there. Today the country is controlled by gangs. The gangs have left the country in a hellish situation. The gangs have links with the state authorities and it has always been like this in the government of Jovenel Moïse and it continues today. Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry first requested the deployment of foreign armed forces more than a year ago. But it wasn't until October that the UN Security Council voted to send a non-UN multinational force there. The biggest problem right now in Haiti is the absence of government and the rule of law. And also all key state institutions have collapsed, even the police. How will the force be able to operate in Haiti if we don't have a functional government? The Ariel Henry government has only reinforced insecurity. The gangs have become more powerful in the country. More territory has been lost to the gangs, which means that Prime Minister Ariel Henry's record is catastrophic. 
In October, two more police officers were killed, according to a police union, with a total of 32 officers killed in Haiti so far this year. Saudi Arabia has been hosting a summit of leaders from Arab states and the Islamic world to discuss the Israel-Hamas war. Prime Minister Mohammed bin Salman told the summit in Riyadh that the war must end. We condemn the military aggression and attacks against civilians in the Gaza Strip, as well as the persistent violations of international humanitarian law and human rights by the Israeli occupation authorities. In Gaza on Saturday, Israeli soldiers encircled the territory's largest hospital, where doctors said five patients, including a premature baby, died after the last generator ran out of fuel. Israel says there are bunkers under the hospital that serves as Hamas's main headquarters. This latest war is the deadliest eruption of the Arab-Israeli conflict for decades. More than 11,000 Palestinians, two-thirds of them women and minors, have been killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. And at least 1,400 people have been killed in Israel, according to its government. Hospitals in Gaza are under attack. They're being hit by airstrikes, shells and gunfire. Overcrowded with thousands of victims of Israeli bombardment, running low on medicine and supplies, and working in the dark. Al-Shifa Hospital, the largest in Gaza, was hit on Thursday and Friday. Dozens of patients, let alone victims, were killed. This is nothing but tragic catastrophe. We cannot find a single bed to place victims on. We cannot even find an, uh, another ward to accommodate the victims. People are dying between our hands and we cannot do anything. At least 50 Palestinians have been killed in an attack on the Al Burak school in Gaza City. It had been sheltering internally displaced families. I was at school when it was bombed, and then I came to the hospital. There is no electricity or any other medical treatment. I've been injured in my chest and leg, but there is no electricity, so nothing has been done so far. Inside the Al-Quds hospital, power has run out, forcing doctors to operate in the dark. The Indonesian hospital has stopped all surgical operations, as it also has no electricity. We're working 24-7, and if we take a rest, it's a maximum of two hours, and then we're back on duty because of the increased aggression on Gaza. But more importantly, there's a serious shortage of medical supplies, especially anesthetics. Today we've run out of the kind we use in emergency cases. People are dying in corridors. What can we do? I'm not the only one suffering. We do not have a place where to sleep. This is destroying us. Even the world war was not like this. More than 11,000 people have been killed in Gaza in the past five weeks of Israeli airstrikes and bombardments. The Palestinian health ministry now says it will start burying people in a mass grave in Al-Shifa hospital because it's impossible to go out and give people proper burials. Dmitry Medvedenko, Al Jazeera. And now in sports news, Red Arrows Football Club has beaten Green Buffaloes Football Club by four goals to nil in the MTN Week 12 fixture. Ricky Banda opened the scoreline in the 15th minute of the match, putting Red Arrows in the lead. Alassane Diara punished Green Buffaloes in the 36th minute from a well-taken cross from Edward Mwenya to make it 2 new and put Arrows in the lead in the first half of the match. The veteran striker James Chamanga put down the wounds Buffaloes for good marking. It's making it a 3 new to the airmen after Buffalo's defenders mixed up to give Tamanga the one-on-one -on -one and he easily and expertly pressed it down. 
Ricky Banda scored his second goal of the match and increased the tally to five, to four rather, to five for the season. On that sporting note, we come to the end of tonight's menus, but before we go, another look at the stories that made the headlines. Minibus drivers in Lusaka clash with pirate taxi drivers. A real estate company accused of swindling a 65-year-old woman of Lusaka. Opposition MPs aged to desist from deliberately breaking the law. And in international news, Kenya says it won't send police mission to Haiti until UN funds it. In sports news, Red Arrows Football Club hammers Green Buffaloes by five goals, by four goals to one. Before we go, we now look at the Cabinet verse of the day, and it comes from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 10. And it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. That's all we had for the news. Don't forget to join us for another bulletin on behalf of the entire news team. Have a blessed night.